Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Tommy McMurtry from the Liberty Baptist Church. Thank you for tuning in once again to the Spirit of Liberty broadcast. I appreciate you listening to this program. I hope you get a blessing from it. I hope you'll be challenged, and I hope you will come and visit us at Liberty Baptist Church. We're at 2002 Ninth Avenue and Rock Falls. Sunday school this morning will be at 10 o'clock. Main service is at 11. Evening service, 6 o'clock, and we also have a... Uh, Wednesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. And we would love to have you come out and visit us one of those days. So every week, I'd like to come and try to give you something from the Word of God to help and to be a challenge. And what I want to talk about this morning uh, might have, seem like it has a weird title to it, but I think it is a very appropriate title uh, considering the time of year that it is and what's been going on. But the title of my program today is A Call to Shame. A call to shame. One of the things that uh, we see in the Bible is often people uh, would talk about how they were ashamed. I want to show you a prayer here from Ezra where he's kind of praying on behalf of the people of his nation. And it's clear that he is ashamed. And this week, uh, our country is going to be celebrating the 4th of July and you're going to hear a whole lot of, I'm proud to be an American and things like that. And, you know, I'm not a, I don't have a huge problem with that. I'm, you know, I'm, I sure am glad I live in the United States of America. I'd rather live here than any other country in the world. There's a lot of things about our country that I am very thankful for. Uh, I think we've got a lot of great history. There's a lot of good, positive things that we can talk about. But at the same time, I think it's wrong for us to neglect certain things. I think there are some things about our country, some things that are going on right now that we really should be ashamed of. And if we are not going to be ashamed of these things, that's a big problem. And it's ultimately, I believe, going to lead to our destruction. The Bible is very clear that pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And people often, if you're, you know, if you're a if you don't say I'm proud to be an American, if you're not saying that you're proud to be an American, they'll tell you that you're not very patriotic and you must not love your country. But the truth is, I do love my country. The truth is, I am patriotic and therefore I am ashamed of what is going on. And just to prove that this is not a bad attitude. I mean, there's a lot of Baptist preachers that would get mad about what I'm saying right here. But let me show you what a man of God said about his nation, the nation of Israel, from the book of Ezra, and in Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1, it says, And when these things were done, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, Hittites, Parasites, Jebusites, Amorites, Moabites, and the Egyptians and the Amorites. One thing that is very clear in the Bible, when God gave them that land, they were supposed to drive out the Canaanites. Why? Because God didn't want them learning their ways. They were supposed to be different than the rest of the world. Now, the United States, you know, we were started as a Christian nation. We were founded as a Christian nation. And a denial of that is just denying history. I mean, you could see it right there from the Mayflower Compact, that when these people came over to the United States, they wanted to establish a Christian nation. And I believe that's what we were, we were founded as. And But at, at the same time, we have gotten away from that. We have gotten very far from that. We are not a Christian nation anymore. There is no doubt about it. And if you if you think we are a Christian nation, then, you know, you're in La La Land somewhere. You know, your, your head is in the sand. And if you think our nation was not started as a Christian nation then you also have your head in the sand too. Truth is, we were started as a Christian nation, but we lost it a long time ago. So he's going on here and he starts talking in this passage. He's confessing what Israel's done. They're doing like the heathen. It says, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers hath been cheap in this trespass. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment, my mantle, and plucked off the hair of my head and of, of my beard and sat down astonished. Then were assembled unto me everyone that trembled at the words of the God of Israel because of the transgression of those that had been carried away 
and I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. We need more people in this country who tremble at the words of God. And I am one of those who tremble at the words of God. Therefore, I fear for our country because of all the abominations that are taking place, because of all the baby killing that is going on through abortion, because of perversion that is being legalized and celebrated and running rampant. I tremble at the words of the Lord. God destroyed nations in the past for these sins, and he will eventually destroy ours too. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. I'm ashamed. And it says, And at the evening sacrifice, I arose up from my heaviness, and having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God and said, O oh my God, I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our head and our trespasses grown up in, unto the heavens. Baptist preachers who would say we're bad because, you know, we're not proud to be an American and we are ashamed right now. Well, you know, what do you say about Ezra who, I mean, here this is, this was God's nation. They were God's people. And when he goes to pray, he is ashamed. He's blushing. He is, I mean, he knows he is not worthy to go in the presence of God and pray and ask for mercy after all their nation had done. But he did because God is merciful. And you know what? We do know that God is merciful, but we ought to be ashamed to take advantage of that. It ought to embarrass us to pray for our country. I don't think that should stop us from paying, praying for our country. I think you should pray for the United States of America. But you know what? When you do, your face ought to be red. You ought to be on your knees. You ought to have your face to the ground. You ought to do it in humility because our country is wicked. It is doing one vile thing after another. And I'm and keep on praying for it. Keep on praying for it, but do it like Ezra. Be ashamed while you're do it, doing it. Don't go praying to God for our nation while you're wearing a proud to be an American t-shirt. I don't think that's going to go as well as it did for Ezra in the way that he prayed. And he said, since the days of our fathers, we have been in great trespass unto this day and our iniquities uh, have we our kings and our priests have uh, been delivered into the hands of the kings of the lands to the sword to captivity and to spoil and to confusion of face as it is this day they were in a bad state because of their sins and he said and now for a little space grace hath been showed on showed from the lord our god to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place that our god may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage some good things were happening at this time. And Ezra, he's thanking God for it. He's thanking God for this little space where grace had been given. He was thankful that there is a remnant. And you know how we ought to look at our country right now and the situation we're in? We ought to look at it as a little space where grace has been given. We ought to look at it being thankful for the remnant. Okay, I'm not going to get up and sing the praises of our president and our leaders, I am ashamed of them. I am deeply ashamed of our leaders. I was deeply ashamed of every candidate that we had in the last election on both sides, deeply ashamed. I am even more ashamed about the selections uh, you know, that are coming up now, the people that, that are uh, campaigning. It is a national embarrassment the people that are going to be running for the highest office in our land, the fact that these people are not being laughed off the stages and run out, it is a national shame. And I'm calling on Christians today to knock it off with this proud to be an American junk and say, you know what, it's time for us to be ashamed. Let's look at a few things about shame in the Bible. The first time we see the word ashamed anywhere in the Bible is in Genesis chapter two and verse 25, talking about Adam and Eve. And it says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. This was before the fall. This was before they had eaten of that fruit. And the Bible mentions how things were a little different then. They were naked, but yet they weren't ashamed. Why did it bring that up? I'll tell you why, because nakedness is a shame. It's something to be ashamed of. Most normal people, if they were out in public naked, if they found themselves in public naked, they would be ashamed. That's how normal people are. Normal people want to cover their nakedness 
perverts want to show everyone their nakedness. And that's what perverts often do. That's why perverts push pornography and uh, do the things that they do to defile the minds of people. It says in uh, Exodus 32, 35, and when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked under their shame among their enemies. Notice how nakedness, it is, it's a picture of shame. Everyone's seeing everything. Okay, you're supposed to cover your nakedness. Why? To hide your shame. Because there are some things that we should be ashamed of. There's some things that we shouldn't want to be showing. And when you just declare those things, that is a shame. That is something that is wrong. And one of the re one of the things that we see going on in our country today is our greatest sins. People are using those things to promote national pride. The things that ought to humiliate us and embarrass us and cause our faces to blush are the things that are celebrated in our country today. And for example, abortion. Okay, Our nation, it celebrates the fact that women are allowed to kill their babies. We should be ashamed of that. We shouldn't want other people to know about that. We ought to want to be trying to hide that fact. But you know what? It's out there in the open for everyone to see. And guess what? They're proud of it. That is strange, folks. That is a weird thing. We live in a country where it's legal to murder an unborn child. And yet people say, I'm proud of being American. Something's wrong with that. We live in a nation that celebrates perversion. And I have to be careful about what I say here because we're on the radio. But listen. Perversion is nothing to be proud of. It's something we should be ashamed of. We have just had an entire month celebrating perversion, and it's known as Pride Month. And I, I find it so interesting that they choose to use the word pride and Pride Month. Because you know what? What does it say in Ezekiel or uh, Jeremiah chapter 6? In verse 15, it says, Were they ashamed when they had committed abominations? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they should be cast down, saith the Lord. Here we see these people, they weren't ashamed at what they had done. They were not ashamed at all. They, and the Bible says they couldn't even blush. Things that would make a normal person blush, it didn't with them. In Isaiah Chapter 3, verse 8, it says, For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Notice one thing about the Sodomites in the Bible. One of the notable things about them, besides the physical abominations that they would do is pride is often referenced. You know, the iniquity of thy sister Sodom, the first thing it mentioned was pride. Notice how here in Isaiah, it's talking about Israel, but saying they declare their sin as Sodom. Why did it bring that up? Because the sin of Sodom was something they should have been ashamed of, but they weren't ashamed of it. They were open about it. And what do we see going on today? We see Sodomites today celebrating perversion, something that they should be ashamed of and for years were ashamed of. We see them celebrating it, promoting it, just declaring it for the whole world to see, just like Sodom. Now listen, our country as a whole has accepted that. Our country as a whole is okay with perversion. Our country has made it so people can marry whoever and pretty much whatever they want. Our country has just denied science and it has said that there's more than two genders. I don't even know how many genders they're saying there are anymore, even though the world has always recognized two, even though science proves two. Our country promotes all this stuff. It has accepted it. It's now a bad thing if you say anything against it. We're looked at as the villains and yet Christians are saying, I'm proud to be an American. I'm okay. Well, if the world wants to say that, they can say that. If perversion, you know, uh, legalized perversion is what makes them proud, then they should be proud of our nation. If killing unborn babies is what makes them proud, they should be very proud of our nation. If a overreaching government 
that is controlling things that has no right. The Constitution never gave it the authority to be involved in. If that's what makes you proud, you should be proud of our nation. If shameful uh, individuals, you know, are in leadership, are a reason to be proud, you should be proud of our nation right now. If just the worst that society has to offer is, you know, running for president is what makes you proud, you should be proud of our nation right now. In the state of Illinois, if high taxes is what makes you proud, you should be proud to be from Illinois. If legalized marijuana is what makes you proud, you should be proud of our state. If I think we have the highest or the second highest taxes for gases now. If that's something to be, a proud, to be proud of, be proud of living in Illinois. Having the most loose abortion laws is something to be proud of, then you should be proud of the fact that you live in Illinois. Now, while you might be proud of that, folks, I am ashamed of that. I am ashamed and I blush to even pray for our country and even pray for our state. Now, it's not going to stop me from doing it. The Lord has told me that I can do that. I can I can approach boldly. I can, I can come to the throne of grace boldly. I have the right to do that and I will do that. But let me tell you something. I often feel like I'm just clearly taking advantage. And let me tell you something. While I do pray for our country and while I do pray for our state, I'm okay if God doesn't answer my prayers. If God says no to every good thing that I ask for when it comes to this country, it won't make me think less of him at all. The fact that we are still here proves that God is merciful. The fact that we are still here, it proves that we have a little space where grace has been given. And so you know what I'm going to keep doing? I'm going to keep on trying to reach people with the gospel. I'm going to try to add to that remnant that's there. I'm going to keep on ministering to the saints. I'm going to keep on preaching the truth of the word of God. I'm going to make sure that when it all does get destroyed, when it all does go down, that you know what? I'm going to go down having been faithful. I'm going to go down with this country, having been preaching the word of God, having warned people that judgment is coming. I don't want it to be said about me that I just stood on the sidelines. I don't want it to be said about me that I just went with the flow, that I just gave into the pressure. I don't want it to be said about me that I just hid behind garbage trash doctrines like dispensationalism as an excuse not to preach the word of God and not to preach the Old Testament and not to teach the law of God. I don't want it to be said about me that I'm a hater of the law of God, that I'm somebody who questions the law of God and acts like it's some bad thing that's out of the Quran, like many Baptist preachers are doing today. No, I'm going to keep on promoting these things. I'm going to keep on teaching that the word of God is good. We're going to preach the word of God in our church. I'm going to let our people know what a righteous government looks like and what a righteous government does, because one of these days, Jesus Christ is going to return and we're going to have a righteous government. And you know what? The people in our church, they're not going to be surprised at what it looks like. They're not going to be surprised one bit because we've preached the law of God, showing what the Bible actually says. And you know what? When we see what the Bible wants and what the Bible calls for and what we have today, you know what? It makes me ashamed. And if you are not ashamed, there's something very wrong with you. You're like the people of Israel. Here you are, I mean, just in a naked state, figuratively speaking, and you're not ashamed. You're not even blushing. It doesn't bother you one bit. We've got a huge problem there, and that is our world today. We ought to be ashamed. And so you say, well, what's the answer? What am I supposed to do? I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to be a part of that remnant. You know what you need to do? You need to stop finding pride in your nation and in this world. You know what you need to do? You need to humble yourself. You need to come to Christ. You need to ask for forgiveness for your sins. You need to be saved. It says in Mark chapter 8 and verse 38, it says, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Now, what does that mean? Hey, what does it mean to be ashamed of Jesus and his words? Okay, what does that mean? Because a lot of times, 
you know, people will use verses like that. Well, it means, you know, you're embarrassed for people to know that you're a Christian. You're embarrassed to act like a Christian. But I actually think this is talking about something very specific here when he's talking about being ashamed of him and his words. All right. And just briefly, I want to just show you what I believe this means with a few verses. All right. In Romans 1 16, the apostle Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You know what? You know what it means? What Paul was talking about right here when he said, I'm not ashamed. Many people, they mock the gospel because of how simple it is. See, the Jews, they require a sign. You know, they're not just going to believe the message. They want to see a magic show. They want to see a miracle. They require a sign. And the Greeks, they seek after wisdom. They want you to prove how smart you are, and they want you to make them feel smart. But you know what? The Apostle Paul said, but we preach Christ crucified. Un, you know, unto the Jews, they, it's a stumbling block. Unto the unto Greeks, it's foolishness. But unto us, it is the power of God. The way people get saved is through believing on Christ. That's what it says there. Most people say, well, I'm not ashamed, meaning I'll wear you know, openly Christian t-shirt. You know, I'm not ashamed, meaning I'll wear a cross necklace or something like that. No, what it means to not be ashamed, it means you're willing to just trust in the work of Jesus Christ. It means you're willing to just believe on him for your salvation instead of trusting in your own good works, which is what most people are doing today. They are trusting in a works salvation. Many people, when they hear what we preach in our church, that hey, no, you don't get saved by just turning over a new leaf and you know becoming a new person. No, you get saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, by trusting in his work, realizing that you can't be good enough, realizing that you can never clean your act up enough in a way that would cause God to accept you. You just have to believe that he'll accept you just the way you are and just call on him for salvation. That's what it means. And many people are ashamed of that. It's like, no, nah, you got to do some works too. You got to get baptized. You got to keep on being good. Otherwise you're going to lose your salvation. But folks, that's not it. And you know what? Salvation means believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And I believe that and I'm not ashamed of it. It gets mocked all the time. Even Baptist preachers often mock this type of gospel. But you know what? I'm not ashamed of it. They can all go jump in a lake of fire with the rest of the world. I know what the Bible says, and I'm not ashamed of it, and I'm going to preach it. I'm going to get called all kinds of things. They'll accuse me of easy believism, or which I believe I am easy believism, but they'll one, two, three, repeat after me, which I'm not. You know, they'll accuse me of teaching a no repentance gospel, which I'm not. I believe in repentance. I just don't believe in how they define it. I'm going to get called all those things, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to muddy up the gospel. I'm not going to add junk to it because I'm not ashamed of it. I like it just the way it is because the way it is, is what's right. I don't believe in one way of salvation for us and another way of salvation for the Jews, as many people teach. No, nope, the Jews require a sign. No, they get the same gospel that we get. If they're not willing to just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they will not go to heaven. Plain and simple. And that's what Paul was teaching right there. In Romans 9.33, it says, as it is written, behold, I lay in Zion, a stumbling stone and a rock of offense and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Romans 10, 11 says for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. What does that mean? What does that, what does that tell you? We've been talking about things we should be ashamed of. I believe we ought to be ashamed at the works and the abominations that are going on in our nation. I, I absolutely believe that. You know what else we ought to be ashamed of? We ought to be ashamed of our own individual works. When it comes to uh, earning salvation and getting to heaven, we should be ashamed of ourselves. We should look at ourselves and just call on the Lord begging for mercy because of the fact that we are embarrassed by our works because we are sinful. We are fallen people. We are incapable of saving ourselves. When it comes to our works, we should be ashamed. If you think you get to heaven by being a good person, you realize you should be ashamed because you're not a good person. If you think getting to heaven is based on your performance 
as a Christian or whatever religion you're a part of, you should be ashamed because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves when it comes to that. But you know what? There's one area where we don't need to be ashamed, and that's in the works of Jesus Christ. And if we will believe on him, you know what? We won't be ashamed. If we will put our faith and trust in him for salvation, we will not be ashamed. Whenever Jesus Christ returns, you know what? We will be ready. We will be waiting. He will change our vile body into one like unto his glorious body. And we will be caught up to be with him in the clouds. We will be with him forever. We won't need to be ashamed. But if Jesus Christ returns and you have nothing but your good works to show, you're going to be ashamed at his coming because when you see him in all his glory and all his righteousness, when he returns in the cloud, the Bible says, behold, every eye shall see him. When he comes then, you will be ashamed. You'll know full well why he didn't take you up in the rapture. But those of us who've put our faith and trust in him, we're waiting for him. We're looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We understand that our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. We understand that we could never be good enough, but we believed him when he said, if we would call on him, that he would save us. That he would, in other words, he would do all the work. He did the work when he died on the cross and he paid for our sins. And so when he retur returns, he's going to change our vile body and we're going to be caught up with him. So now do you understand what he's saying there in Mark 8, 38, when he says, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words. What were his words? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, what was, what is saying ashamed of him? What does that mean? It means you don't think his payment on the cross was enough. You think he had to die on the cross and you've got to go get baptized. He had to die on the cross and you've got to go be a good Baptist or a Catholic or whatever it is. You think he needs your help. In other words, you are ashamed of what he did. You don't think it's sufficient. You've got too much pride to tell other people that you know you're going to heaven just because of his works. You've got to give yourself some credit too. You think you've got to add you know, some contribution that you made in your testimony because you're ashamed of his testimony. But let me tell you something. I've read the entire Bible. I've read all the Gospels. I've read about his death, burial, and resurrection. I've read about the virgin birth. I've read about his sinless life. And you know what? I believe it when the Bible says that that was, that was good enough. That was payment and that he freely offers salvation to all who will believe. And I'm not ashamed of that. I've accepted that. I called on him for salvation. And when he comes, he will not be ashamed of me because my righteousness is based on his works. But boy, if he returns and it's been me depending on my righteousness, he's going to take one look at that and he's going to reject it in a heartbeat and he'll be ashamed of me. So as, as believers, uh, let me say once again, you know, forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the cross of Christ my God, as the song says, and as, as the Apostle Paul stated, we ought to, I mean, we ought to be proud of him and not ourselves. And folks, it's a time that we dump this national pride thing after the last month, after all the abominations that we have seen take place in our country in the last several years, it's time for a wake up. And I'm calling on believers everywhere to be ashamed and to pray for their country the way Ezra did. Please don't go out this 4th of July wearing a t-shirt saying, proud to be an American. I believe that. I believe you're spitting in the face of God when you do that. This is a time to be ashamed. If we ought to wear anything for the 4th of July this year, it should be sackcloth and ashes as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, I hope this was a blessing to you. I hope I didn't ruin your 4th of July picnic. Go have fun on your day off. You know, go do some fun things with your family and friends. Nothing wrong with that. But let's not be proud of what's going on. Let's be ashamed. So thank you so much for watching. We will see you next week.